Okay. Tutorial time. Let's... So if you've clicked on this video, it means that you're looking to rip your models, or have already ripped your models, and turn them into uh, 3D printable objects. Uh, as you know, you can do it from the raw model. As you can see here, this model to the left, this is the raw exported data from Skyrim. Now, you could 3D print this. I mean, it's it looks great, right? Until uh, you turn off the textures. So, let's turn those off. Shade it flat. This is what the model will look like if you just print it without, uh, well, making it look nice, obviously. Uh, you. This is definitely not what you want if you're looking to make something, well, bigger and something that's going to be seen. So I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you two methods, actually of how you can turn this into, uh, well, this. I'm going to be adding these details in using two methods. The first method is the easy way. Uh, with You can get decent results, but one, your PC is going to scream at you, and two, he, it's a little rough around the edges and it's not super desirable but let me show you what I've got here now converting these models does work better if you have all the UV the um, all the UV information saved so as you can see here the model is textured which means all the UV data is there uh, if your model is not UV textured then you're going to have to bring up some references of your own so you can sculpt to those references so the first step um, to both of these techniques I'm going to show you uh, is you're going to have to untriangulate this now what do I mean by that well as you can see everything is made up of tries right here now, if we're going to be subdividing this, uh, I'll show you that right now. If we're going to be subdividing this model without moving, removing tries, I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, it's going to give you these weird patterns. So you can see how when you subdivide it, it, it doesn't subdivide it very nicely it's kind of rough uh, it's it, it will work but it's not um, clean so let me show you how to fix this up right here now what you can do is select all the, the select the mesh and hit alt J and what that will do is basically turn the mesh back into quads again. So as you can see, we've got quads. Everything's a quad. So now, when you subdivide it, add a subdivision, it's much better typology. Everything is flowing, everything... It, it's much easier to work with once you have this down. But, as you can tell, uh, there's some issues here where the, the mesh isn't joined, uh, and some parts may look smoother than they actually should here. Oh, this is the really cheap and dirty way to do it, but I'm going to take this a step further. So what we can do is, well, first of all, check. We're going to have to check if your mesh actually um, converted to quads properly. Now, as you can see here, this is an issue with automatically converting them. You have quad, 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 that all works nicely. Quad, but as you can see, it's been shifted to the left. Now, this sometimes happens, it's just... It's normal because that's just how Blender works. Since it's not a perfect mesh. Anyway, what we can do is cut. 
um, back these intersections right here to add them back and then delete these awkwardly angled tries or edges I should say um, now you may notice that I've not deleted the edges but I've dissolved them so if you delete them normally it's gonna leave holes in the mesh which is not what we want so if you hold down control and then press delete or control X it'll delete those um, edges without messing up your 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 mesh and we can see that here hasn't disturbed the UVs at all which is really nice so we can keep doing this around all the parts where it looks kind of awkward just dissolve those now it is better if you turn off the texture which I'll do here easier to see this is not necessary this one's not necessary uh, I mean, you could say I am being nitpicky here, but I'm. I'd just rather it be a cleaner result, because when we come when we come to the sculpting stage, um, it's much easier to sculpt straight lines along a properly subdivided mesh. So I'm just gonna keep going in here. Actually, uh, you may want to turn on your texture again to just give you a bit of a guide on where those edges should and shouldn't be. So when it comes down to little parts here, it's really hard to tell what has been um, converted properly and not. So as you can see here on the texture, it's that that's obviously a raised bump going along here, right? But as you can see, there's an edge here randomly. So uh, fix that up right there. And yeah, much better. So overall, it's just cleaning up the mesh, removing odd edges. Now, this step isn't necessarily required, but it is a preferred way of doing things. Um, and I'll probably I'll probably speed this up so you don't have to watch me doing this because it's not very interesting. Uh, actually, now occasionally something like this may happen. Now what your problem here is if I turn on proportional editing you can see that the mesh is not joined together. Uh, easy fix, select everything actually let me select everything, uh, press M and then merge by distance. So that got rid of right there you can see 239 vertices so now everything that was separated has now been joined and that's fixed most of the issues uh, that we've had right now. Uh, I'll just clean up these few on the face here. Nice, nice. You can subdivide it from here, um, which is what we will be using. But keep in mind the edges which you want to keep sharp will have to be creased. Now what do I mean by that? Well, it's exactly what you think it is. If I hold shift and press E and then move the cursor, it will crease the edge that I selected. Now, you may be asking what benefit does this have, but it's making the crevices more pronounced instead of just smoothing them over. While you could just keep your model subdivided like it is here, it's not going to give you an amazing result if you don't put some work into it. So right here, that's now a properly raised bump. Hang on, let me just do this here. So that's now a properly raised bump as it was intended to be, instead of just a smoothed over blob like we have here. Now you may be thinking, it's a little sharp, but that's fine, we'll be fixing that. And I'm not going to be doing this to the entire model because uh, you can do that in your own time. Alright. Okay, so now we've got uh, just a few of the creases put in. If you can see, I've creased the corners and the top at the front, around those shapes here, around the sides. All been creased around the back. Uh, I've missed a few here.
Uh, once you have all your edges creased, you we can start on the quick and dirty method. Now, I will not be... Now, you are going to need a lot of processing power for this, so I would save here. Uh, add, you want to add a... This... Now you want to add a displace modifier. As you can see, it's inflated a little bit. So what we're going to do is displace the mesh. Uh, displace the mesh according to the texture. So if we turn on the texture, you know, nothing changed other than it's inflated. It's normal. So we want to add a texture. Um, make sure you add the right one. You want to add the texture that's being used. Uh, if you have a normal map, that'll work a lot better. So right here I've got one normal map. And when, once you add that, you want to go back to the modifiers and apply... No, no, don't apply anything. Change this to UV. Turn off the texture. And now you can see there's something's happening here. Um, and this does mean that it's working. But first we need to increase this maybe a few times. Now this is something. <laughs> so it has worked here. And you may want to play with the direction um, Sometimes this, you might want this to be a negative, but in this case, it looks like it's worked fine. And as you can see, the detail is not quite there, but that's because I have to turn this up. On the face, it looks all right. But depending on your PC, you could probably boost this all the way up to six and make it even more. See, just adding it to five already made it a much better. Now this is the quick and dirty method if you just want, you, you know, you don't want to spend much time on sculpting, adding proper details, this is the quick and dirty method. So right now you can just apply these and export it and get onto printing. I'm not going to be showing you how to slice up the model and stuff, but if you're making a helmet, let's say, you're going to want to solidify this which basically adds a thickness to it. So if you can see here, I'm going to turn off this place for a second. I'm just going to slow that down. Basically solidify gives it a bit of thickness, like a shell, so you can actually, when you go to print it, um, it'll have thickness to it. Yeah, that's basically it for the quick and dirty method. We want to delete this subdivide modifier because we don't need it anymore and replace it with a multi-resolution. So with the multi-resolution it's basically the same as subdivision except when you you can use this to sculpt into the mesh without destroying it. And what do I mean by that? Well, as you can see here, it's it's subdivided like we expect, but we can actually sculpt into this. So if I head on over to Sculpt Mode, and I am going to need my tablet for this. If you don't have a tablet, you can still use a mouse, but I prefer to use a tablet because I have one, and it's just a lot easier. Now this is the long and tedious way. This is the longest and most tedious part of this process. What we do need for this method is a reference to work off. So, turn on the texture. You may want to increase the brightness of your textures in like uh, Photoshop or Paint Tool or whatever. And I think you can do it using the nodes as well, but I'm not going to. What I'm basically going to do is select this texture, which is easier to see. And then go into this helmet and we can go straight into sculpt mode. So when you go into sculpt mode, it's going to get rid of the texture. 
Um, I think that's just per for performance reasons, which is fine. Which is this is why we have the reference to our left. And this part will take a very long time to do, so I'll come back with a bit of detail. Now I will show a little bit of the process here, but not too much. So we want to make sure the details a little higher than two. So you can use all the brushes you want here, and make sure symmetry is turned on because you do not want to sculpt twice. Okay, so here I am back with the sculpted helmet. Uh, when I said this is going to take a while, I did mean that because this one took um, a couple of days um, because I did work um, also on the rest of the armor, well, the rest of the top half. So my goal with this set was to turn it into a cosplay uh, but so far what I've done here I've just turned it into a little bust um, which I thought would make for a good 3d print so as you can see here everything's joined in one and it's all ready to go now I didn't really film any of the process here with the sculpt but I'll basically explain the steps I did um, as this is not a sculpting tutorial, there's plenty of sculpting tutorials uh, out there. Uh, eventually, at some point, I did, instead of using the multi-resolution to sculpt, I instead used uh, dynamic typology. Um, and basically, this is a type of sculpt... Basically, this is... A sculpting method which destroys the topology so it adds it every time you make a brush stroke so if you can see here I don't know if you can see but you can see the geometry here uh, where it's kind of low if we tick dynamic topology and then start sculpting we sculpt you can see it adds it adds um, more detail based on this number here each time you uh, sculpt so you might be able to see this better with uh, the wireframe turned on so as you see every time we make a brush stroke it just adds uh, more triangles as you need it and this is good for if you have a lower spec PC as this is a lot less taxing and you know, a lot doable. Um, you can even do this method using a low-end laptop. I have tried it before. But just keep in mind, the larger your project is, the slower it's going to be down the line. So once I got all the details in, I added a few cracks as like a final step kind of thing. And I was happy with how that was going. What I did with the holes here is um, I used a separate shape. Um, I used a cube. And with this cube, I basically scaled it to the shape I needed. Um, and then... I, I then used this shape to cut into the surface. Um, I'll only briefly mention how I did this here, but basically you, you stick the shape where you want it to cut. Um, and 
on the mesh you want it to cut into, you use a boolean modifier. Now when you add a boolean, you get these three options here. Um, difference means you want to add an object that you want to cut into the mesh. Now if I add this object here, it's going to cut into the mesh uh, right there. Which I will show if my PC allows. <sighs> so if I go ahead and hide this now, you can see that we've just cut a massive ugly hole into the mesh. So that's basically basically what I used for here, and then I just kind of sculpted it around to make it a little messier. I also did the same technique for the mouth and the eyes. As you can see, I've made them go in a little bit, and then I've just filled the holes through here. Now, I wouldn't have filled the holes on the full-sized armor set, as this is just a small little little bust thing. But if I was making this a full set of armor, I would not have filled those holes. Uh, also for the chest piece, these are literally just uh, spheres that I shrank down and then placed on the body. Uh, as for the neck piece, I used um, the original low poly mesh and I did the same technique, uh, you know, subdividing it and um, making sure those edges were creased. And then what I did was I turned on the texture and then I used the knife tool to cut along where these um, parts of the, um, the squares pop out. So I cut them and then I just hit E, I extruded them one by one and I just got the basic shape down using simple extrusions really. Uh, this just avoided me sculpting the details by hand. Uh, the goal here really is to um, get as much detail as you can in the mesh before you start sculpting. And this just saves time and effort. Because if I, let's say, didn't crease these parts of the armor before sculpting, I would have had to do that all by hand. Uh, which is just slow and unnecessary. So this will save you a lot of time if you if you follow the creasing steps in the earlier part of the video. Um, what else? So... A different technique I used for the parts here, the embossed sections around these parts here. What I did was in sculpt mode, I used something called the mask brush. Uh, you can press M. So when you draw, you basically get this black paintbrush kind of thing. And what this allows you to do is, well, lets you mask what you want. So let's say there's a little, uh, it's a little hard to show here. So let's say there's a little line I want to emboss here. So you'd mask the spot and then you would invert the mask by pressing Control I. And there's a tool, a little handy tool down here called Mesh Filter. Now if you click that and then click and drag to the right, what this does is will basically extrude or um, in this case just um, move it outwards based on your masked uh, mask really and that's the same technique I did for all these parts and I made sure they were in the right position by following the texture on the left here which was pretty fun to do and finally for the arms now uh, finally, for the arms, I actually just used the Displace modifier, just like I did in the first part of the tutorial, which is the quick and dirty method. Because I didn't really care much for sculpting the arms myself, they're just going to be like, uh, there. Um, so that worked really well just for that part of the mesh. So just get a bit more of a detailed look around here. 
So I hope this tutorial helped anybody out there curious to printing their game models and such. And I'll be showing some photos up on the screen of the finished print here. And yeah, hopefully one day I'll be able to turn this into a full set of armor. Uh, a full set of wearable armor. So yeah. I'll catch you later. Alligator.